Okay. And she came here to you. Right, maybe I shift this a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Exodus 32 makes it very clear. Moses is up on the hill, meeting with God, and then uh, something happens down on, on, on the hill. Okay? Now, if you go to this place, now this place is not in what tour guide will show you somewhere in Egypt. They say this is Mount Sinai. It's not. This is somewhere what we today call Saudi Arabia. Right. If you have, if you go to this place, as you come down down to the to the to the foot here, you find a lot of burial ground. Bedouin never bury their people like this time, so it cannot be Bedouin. Okay, Bedouins are people who, who live in the desert area, so they are not Bedouins. Okay, we will find out how many people died after this. Okay, while we were reading the scriptures, and then after that we will see a video, a short video, and then we will. Uh, come to the point where our minister to you. Uh, Exodus 32. So we're going to read a quite a lot of passage here. Okay, so just listen. When the people of saw Moses delay to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together and say, and together to Aaron and say to him, make up, make us God who shall go before us. For as as for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. <coughs> now, they just heard God's voice. Am I right? Yeah. Earlier, if you read, they just heard God's voice. They just saw the thunderous thing. They, they were shocked to see all those things. They just saw the mighty God yeah. coming down on the mount, Sinai. They saw everything. Now, what they are they saying? We don't know where this Moses has gone to. They're not looking to God, they're looking to Moses. And so Aaron said to them, take off the ring of uh, uh, the ring of gold that are in your ear of your wife, your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graven, uh, graving tool and made a golden calf. Now underline that word golden calf. And they say, and they say, uh, who say? People. Yeah. They say, right? Yeah. Now, what did they say? These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early. Put the underline that word rose up early. Okay, the next day and offered burnt offering and brought peace offering, and the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. Now underline the word play because it's uh, something that most of us would not understand. Okay, now and the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people whom you brought. Now, who is talking? Who's talking here? The Lord. Only one is always saying something. Now, from now on, you cannot open your mouth. You do open, I'll beat you. Who, who is speaking here? Huh? And the Lord said to Moses, so the Lord was saying, he's talking, right? Where are you all? Are you all reading according with me? And the Lord said to Moses, go down for your, you, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt. That's not accurate right now. <laughs> Actually, it's God who brought them out. Have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, it's a stiff-necked people, now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, that I may consume them, in order that I may make a nation of you. That means of who? 
No, a Moses. Please, I'm your Moses. No, no, but ask. ask who? Okay, God is saying, I will wipe up the whole nation and take Moses and make the nation out of Moses. That's what God is saying. Okay, but Moses implored the Lord, his God, and said, Oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people? Now, Moses is redirecting God and saying, This is your people. Now, Moses, God told Moses, This is the people you brought. Now, this is a dialogue that is taking place. God doesn't know anything yet. It's a play of word, right? And God is playing words, and Moses is playing words with God also. This is an exchange within a conversation between God and man. And the man is Moses. Okay, so, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power, with mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, did he bring them out to kill them in the, in the mountain and to consume them the, from the face of the earth? That means to wipe them completely out. Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and, and uh, Israel, your servant, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your offering as the sun stars of the heaven, and all this land that I have promised, I'll give it to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relent from the disaster that he has spoken to bring upon his people. Now here is something that you and I have to see. God has intended to wipe them out, right? Yes, yes or no? Yes. But Moses began to talk to God. Am I right? Yes. yes. What do you call that? He's interceding. Right? He's praying. He's interceding. He's talking to God. Right? Now, once he had done that, what did God do? Now I can use this word, but most people will, will be offended by it. God repented. But what it mean by the word repent? It means he turned 180 degrees back again. That's what repentance is. If you are walking this way, you turn 180 degrees, you walk backward. That's called turning back. So God relented. Okay, he, okay. he relented from destroying his people. This is what happened in a conversation between you and God. You can go before God and talk to Him. You can argue with Him. But when you argue with God, you must use the right words. And Moses went back and took all the words that God has spoken. You get the picture? Yes. God has spoken. Now I didn't speak, you didn't speak, or Moses didn't speak. God has spoken and took everything that God has spoken and gave it back to Him. And what did God do? He had no choice. <laughs> Right? He said, okay, I will let. Now, why? Why is this important? This is how we need to pray. Yeah. Right? Now, let me read, finish, then we pray, then we go to the Word. Or not? Then Moses turned and went down on the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand. Tablets are written on both sides. Uh, tablets are written on what? Both sides. Both sides. Yeah. Huh? Whenever you see a tablet that's there, you only see one side the tableau, one side the tableau, right? That's not true. So when you see a drawing like that, you know that's, that's not true. How many tablets he had? Two. Ah, <laughs> and written on? Uh -huh. Remember that, huh? So when you next time see a picture and someone gives it to you, tell them you can keep the picture because this picture is not accurate. Okay? So it's written on both sides. So he is bringing down the tablets now. Uh, where am I now? Uh, both. The tablets were the work of God and written with written with the writing of God engraved on the tablet. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shout, he said to Moses, This is a noise of war in the camps, but he said, It is not the sound of victory or the sound of city of a cry of defeat, but the sound of singing that I hear. As and as, as soon as they came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot and he threw the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Why? Because it's already broken. Spiritually it's already broken, now physically he breaks it. He took the calf that was made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it in the water and made the people of Israel drink it. 
And Moses said to Aaron, what did you, what did these people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord burn hot. Now, who is older, Aaron older or, or Moses older? Aaron. Aaron, right? What did Aaron call him? What did Aaron call him? Don't look at my face, it's not written here. <laughs> What did Aaron call him? Oh. He said to Moses, what did he say to Moses? He said, and when Moses uh, asked him this question, what have you, what have, and when Moses saw that the people had broken loose, sorry, um, no. Moses said to Aaron, what did these people, verse 21, what did these people do to you that you have brought a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, what? Let not the anger of my Lord. Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine? He has a younger brother, but he's calling him what? Lord. Lord. Now the word Lord is in small capital, but when you will give respect to someone above you, you call them Lord. Okay, that's what the those days. Okay, so he said to them, he said as um, let not the anger of the Lord burn hot. You know that the people that you are set on evil. Now what is evil? Or what is wickedness? What is wickedness? In God's eyes, uh, not in the eyes of this world. Uh, in God's eyes, what is wickedness? Anything you do contrary to God, that's wickedness to God. Hello? That's wickedness in God's eyes. Not in the eyes of this world. They look at wickedness very differently. But in God's eyes, everything you do opposite to God, that's wickedness. That's why sometimes he says, get out from your evil ways. That's what he's saying. That's wickedness in God's eyes. Alright, let's move on. Uh, <coughs> For they said to me, Make us a God who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, Let me let, let any of you who have gold take it off. So they gave me it, I threw it into the fire and came up this calf. No such thing, huh? You you clearly know earlier earlier part of the scripture he is a what what is what kind of job was he holding? He's a blacksmith, right? So he knows how to make things, okay? And so he said he threw something inside and it came out. That's a lie, right? And when 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 Moses said saw that the people had broken loose and Aaron had let them break loose, he to the derision of their enemies. And Moses said in the gates of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered around him. And he said to them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put your sword on your side, each of you, and go out, go to and fro the gate, and throughout the camp, and each of you kill his brother and his companion and his neighbor. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And that day about how many people? 3,000 3, men of the people of fell. How many people fell? 3,000. We are so unhappy because the whole world is unhappy because a few thousand, uh, maybe a few hundred died in Gaza. And everybody say, oh, where? How many people died? 3,000. 3,000. How big your village, Rachel? Very small. So how many people are there? Roughly? Thousand? More than. Huh? More than thousand. Let's say two thousand. Three thousand. Ten thousand. No, no. No, her village, ma'am. Oh. Uh -huh. Now, let's say three thousand from your village. I did. Is that a big deal? 
Yes. Whole day they have to be buried, right? Yes. How many people died here? Three thousand. Who killed them? Their own people. The, the sons of Levi took sword and went and cut everybody up. Who asked them to do? Moses. Who told Moses to do? God. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your word, Lord, for your word speaks louder than anything, Lord. At this juncture of time, we, we ask, Lord, that you speak to us through your word, Lord. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. So, 3,000 people fell. Okay, now let's go on. Verse 29. And Moses said, Today you have been ordained for the service of the Lord, each one of or at the cost of his sons and his brothers, so that you might bestow a blessing upon you this day. The next day, Moses said to the people, You have sinned. A great sin, and now I'll go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and, and said, Alas, these people have sinned a great sin. They have made themselves go, God to go. But now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out from your book that you may have you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot them out of my book. But now Go, lead the people to the place about which I have spoken to you. Behold, an angel shall go before you. And nevertheless, in that day when I will visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Then the Lord sent a plague on the people because they made a calf. And Aaron, and the one that Aaron made. Who sent a plague? More people died? 3,000. More people died, right? Not 3,000. Keep, don't, don't keep repeating 3,000. Okay, 3,000 has gone earlier. I just told her, don't open her big mouth. But she cannot, huh? Now, because when the plague comes on the people, more people die. Okay, it's not mentioned, but more people die. Now, let's just watch this video. Uh, let me just take a seat here. Uh, forgive me for that. Oops. What happened here? Wait a minute. I need to go to the You all can see, right? Okay, what did you see there? Yeah, what she got. The Buddha, right? Yeah. And they were all dancing, right? Yeah. Nobody told you this, right? No. Huh? Uh, this is what was happening. Right? <coughs> now, the video was too fast and, and, and skipped the part portion of it. And in Israel, nobody explained to anyone also. Now, it's called the Supernova uh, Music Festival. It's about three kilometers away from Gaza's border. Okay, just three kilometers huh? away from Gaza's border. And they were having it. It's a place called the Negev. Negev is down south. It's a big desert area kind of place. Okay, uh, it is in the Negev, and that's where this all took. But all this taken place in down south. Okay, it's a place called Negev, and it's all taking place there. Now this is a festival. Now in this festival, they were drinking, they were having sex, they were having everything. Now I told you to underline the word play, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, they play. They had sex, open sex, they had they had drugs, they had alcohol, everything is played in place. Now where is this place? In Israel, huh? South No, not somewhere in uh, let's say the Philippines. No, it's not in the Philippines. Mm. <laughs> it's where? South uh, not in Lucky Plaza. Right? It's somewhere in the Negev. And look what they are worshipping. They're dancing towards this thing. Why is this thing there in the first place? Nobody gives you an answer. But this is exactly what was going on. Right? 
What time did the enemy came? Very early in the morning, they were already firing. But 6.30, the rocket fired, and very soon, they were gunning all these people down, very early. Now, I told you in the scripture, when I read to you, I say early, early in the morning, right? And that's what was taking place. Exactly, they were dancing. Now, if you read the scriptures, verse 19 says, And as, he, as soon as he came near the camp, saw the calf and the dancing. You read the scriptures, that's what it is. They saw the calf, they saw the Buddha. We all see the Buddha, right? That's the Buddha. Yeah, it's the Buddha. The Buddha statue is there. Okay, um, you know his sitting position. Uh, that's the statue of Buddha. And they're all dancing below. Now, whatever you may be thinking, let me also say this. I detest what Hamas has done. Not against the Palestinian people. Neither do I shouting, you know, you know, guess the Jews. No, I'm not saying all those things. What I'm saying is, you we, we look at one side of the story, but we don't look at the whole picture of the story. Yes, what they did was very bad. Yes, five times Israel wanted to give the land. As many land. When in 1984, if you look at the land that the Jewish people wanted, was so small, very small land. The rent is all for them. The Jews say, okay, we will sign it, we'll take whatever we got. That's they're happy with that small land. They the whole they rejected it. And then five times, four times later, they were willing to give even more. They rejected it. So it has nothing to do with rejection. Now, if the Palestinian people are, 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 have no land, Egypt got a lot of land. Why did Egypt don't want to give? No, did Egypt say, we don't you. You don't come here. Why? A trouble. King Jordan said, no such thing. Don't come to our land. You are trouble. In Lebanon, they say, don't come. You are trouble. Nobody wants them. It was the Romans who decided to put the name. They you know how they changed the name. They were so angry with these people. In Judea, what they decided to do, they decided to put the name called Syria Palestina. That's what they put. Later on, the name Palestine came by. The Arabs are saying, this land does not belong to you guys, belong to the Jewish people. The Arabs are saying, I got videos of the videos, Arabs are coming out and saying, you, you're so stupid, you don't know history. Telling their own people, own Arab people who are talking, you see, you're stupid, you don't know the history. It's very clear. So I'm not against anything. Neither am I saying kill all the Palestinians. No, that's, that's not right also. I, what I'm saying is that this thing is very demonic at this moment. Exactly what it is. And you, if you look at history, what God did when they brought the golden calf, what did God do? God killed them. 3,000 actually died. And he sent a plague on them also. Kill more people. So whose side is God now? <coughs> Correct. Now, it, I, I may be confusing you, but look, look, look at this. This is the land promised to the people of the Jewish people. It was promised to them. And God keeps his promise. He's not going to take away the land. Right? But we, have, we also must look at what's going on in the land. Look, when you really look at the video, some of them are dressed terribly bad. Right? Now, that's how they, they were doing it. And then, later on, they all cried, you know, we were doing, you know, we were so lovely, and all rubbish was going on there. Yes, the survivors, praise the Lord, they didn't die, good, wonderful. But this was bad going on. Drugs, alcohol, sex, all taking place in this place. Now, if you go to Tel Aviv, okay, um, you will see almost like that. Everything is there. A Buddhist temple is there in Tel Aviv. Yeah. Baha'i temple is there in Tel Aviv. Well, everything is there. Now, you cannot put this like this. Now, let's look at some scriptures. Uh, let's look at the scripture itself. Now, what did God call these people? Huh?
God called them stiff necked people. Okay. What is stiff neck? Sandy. Huh? <laughs> what is the stiff neck people? Huh? <laughs> Cannot turn left or right. I cannot answer it. Just because she said so, you will follow the whole life. Stiff neck. Stubborn. Yes! Stubborn! Stubborn people cannot take advice. Cannot. I have seen uh, two couples fighting in a plane you know, when I'm flying. And I'm sitting on the other side and watching the whole thing. The two couples are fighting. Both are Jewish people. Fighting in the plane. Crazy. <laughs> so they are very stubborn. Okay, these are stubborn people. Then God says, stubborn. Now therefore let me alone. God says, don't talk to me. Let me alone means what? Don't talk to me. Right? We all sometimes tell our friend, let me alone. Quiet. Right. What are we tell him? Don't talk to, us, to me anymore. Let's see what God is saying. Let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them. That means God sometimes says, let me alone, what he's actually saying. Now, look at, look at me. When we say to a friend, let me alone, we are thinking about it more and more, right? Yeah, we don't want you to tell us to stop thinking. And that's what God is actually saying. Let me alone, let me think about it. Yeah, that my heart, okay, I can be hot. Then what, what he says that, straight away he says this, uh, that I may consume them in order that I may a great nation of you. God was willing to go that far to wipe them up from the face of the earth. Later on when you read, you can see it, it can, he says wipe them up from the face of the earth. That means he wants to clean them one clean and then start off with Moses. And God was willing to go that far because of this. Okay? But you know Moses is his <laughs> He knows how to talk to God, and we can learn a lot of things from him. He went back to God and told God, Hey, remember you said this, 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 you know? And when he went back to God and take God's word and give it back to God, God has no other choice but to relent. One of the things that he actually said was fantastic. He said, what would the Egyptians say? Verse 12, with evil intent, did you bring them, bring them upon? out to kill them in the mountain and consume them from the face of the earth. And that's what I'm saying, to wipe them out completely. Now what is the charter or the covenant of Hamas, as I told you earlier, to wipe the people out of Israel completely. That was the intent. And they have not changed their, 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 their charter or covenant, they have not changed it. The whole world is saying, oh, that is bad. But behind their back, they are doing all sorts of other things. So don't listen to the news. <coughs> because the news is bad. Because behind their back, they are doing all sorts of things to help the Palestinians. And when they send all the things to you, you think the Palestinian people will get it or Hamas will get it? <coughs> Cuckoo, no. But let me tell you, they all know what's going on. And they want to run this show. That someone may want to make money out of all this. All right, but Moses implored God, and so God relented. Okay, Moses went back to talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Israel. This is important. We need to go back on history to find out what God has promised, and then come back to it now. Now these are Jewish people, correct? All these people are dancing there. Are all Jewish people. But I'm going to tell you this, there are a lot of Jewish people who do not believe in God. Right? They don't believe in anything. They're free thinkers, some are Buddhists, some go to Baha'i. Or during the distance, they come back to their land. So you are from where? No, whichever it is. So let, 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 me, let, me, let me say this to you. That argument sounds very good. They are coming from different land. But if I'm a Jewish man, Let's say that I'm an Indian guy. Do I still have the Indian thing? Or do I completely take it out? Wherever I'm staying. 
Go wherever you are, you find the Hindu fellows are still praying to their Hindu gods. But these people completely no longer do it. Why? Because they started hating God. And it happened to their grandfathers and grand grandfathers. They started hating and it all comes down the line. This is the result of it. Later on, there are other pictures when you go. Guy still wearing a, uh, his, I don't know what you call it. Okay. Huh? Skull cap. Uh, skull cap, but there's another Hebrew word for it. He was wearing that and they were all there. Some, some are not completely. Though they are Jewish, they have all those things, but they still practice this. But if you go and tell them Jesus is Lord, you will be beaten up. In a recent video, the, the, um, there were some, some people carrying the cross and the Jewish people were passing by, you know, Jewish Orthodox, they spit on them. And that's the Jewish people. They hit the Christians. But if you read from the beginning, it was the Christian, Judeo Christians who actually gave them the blessing and started helping Jewish people to go back to their land. It was the Judeo Christians. And this is the result of it. So I'm not saying all uh, the Jewish people, you know, all good, you know, God. No, no. This is happening. And we go back to the scriptures, we look at the scriptures, and this is going on. And so God has, Moses has to break the, the thing, he threw the, the tablets out of his hand. Why? You break one law, you break all the Ten Commandments. One, one of the commandments you break, you break all the commandments. And so he threw it out. Saw the calf and the dancing. Now this, this is exactly what's going on throughout the earth. Right? Now being Christians, there are certain things we are not allowed to do. Correct? Yes. Am I right or not? Yes. There are certain things we don't bow to. There are certain things we don't follow the way the people of this world does. And there are times I go and see my friend who had passed away. My, my Indian friends, they all will come, they all bow down and all the things. I just stand there. No. I'm not going to do this. And they do all the, the ritual that they have to do. I don't. I just stand there. All my friends know, you will not do it. I won't do. I came to show respect and I did but I'm not following anything that you do because I'm not so there is a line that is drawn that I would not want to cross here's the line that you clearly know it should not cross now what line is that let me go and show you or let me say to read to you Exodus 20 verse 1 and the Lord spoke all these words saying I the the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery you shall no, have no other God before me first command that is in Exodus 20 now if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 5 you'll find this also but here is here he already said now he gave the law in the same place that they make the calf do you know no? That's the same place that he spoke this word audibly to everyone. In the same place they made the calf. Now if this is down in history many years, it's still happening. Or what we call today we call history back repeats itself. It's still happening. And then you expect what to happen? Good thing to happen. No. God will still punish. So we need to see this in the light of it all. Now, a lot of people like to follow the Buddhist ways, mystics, the, you know, a lot of things. In, in Buddhism, there is no salvation, do you know? No? Yeah. You do this, do this, do this, do this, you may have salvation. <laughs> salvation is not written, okay, you do this, you, have, you may have salvation. <laughs> Whatever it is, uh, but you will have no salvation in the end. There's no such thing that salvation will come. Right? So that is Buddhism. And a lot of people like to follow it. A lot of white people like to follow it because they find it mystic, you know. 
they like to follow those things. Now I know in the Philippines they also have Buddhist people, right? Yeah. Correct or not? Yes. Do they have a Buddhist temple then? I don't know. In the city. The city. Oh, all of you are sleeping, huh? Yeah. The city. Anyway, now this has taken place. I'm flying very soon to Nepal. And when we land in Kathmandu, I have to take a domestic flight and fly to a place called Bairwa. When I land in Bairwa, just a few kilometers away from Bairwa is a place where Buddha was born. Now, he wasn't born in India, as many of you think. He was born in Nepal. Okay? Lumbi is that place. Okay? Uh, there's another name for it also, which is very long. I've forgotten how to pronounce it, but that's the place that he is. I was born there. Now, the idea of, of all this thing is, he went out to find out salvation. He couldn't find because he was looking at the wrong place. But that's the statue there. And everybody down below here is dancing like mad. The music is boom, 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 you know, the kind of music. Now you can go back and you can click and you can watch. Okay, that's up to you. But I'm trying to pinpoint this to the word of God. God slaughtered 3,000 people of his own people, using their own people to kill them. And the Levites were used to kill 3,000 people. He did not say how many people were men, how many people were women, he did not mention it. But 3,000 people actually died that day. Later on, at the end of the passage, he makes a remark, and God sent a plague. Now, a plague can be more people dying on a plague, right? So, this is what is happening. So, don't come around and tell me something else that God isn't. So, you see judgment taking place in this episode itself. Now, you may blame it all on the Hamas people, and we can. But when we go to scripture, how to comprehend this? Now, many people didn't talk, didn't talk about it. The first time I watched this video, I looked at it, and I went back and looked at it. Later on, Steve, what was his name, Steve? Chocolati. Steve, Steve. Uh, Steve, Steve Chocolati. Uh, he mentioned this. Now, he is partly Thai, eh? he's partly Thai, he was born in Thailand. The he knows Thai. The whole, the whole idea we know is about, he knows about Buddhism. But what I'm trying to say is, this happens, the whole world did not talk about this. Even Christian group is not talking about this. Why everybody wants to be, you know, nice to the Jewish people. But let's look at it, this is bad. This shouldn't happen. They invite the doctor. So, now, how many of you ask this question, why a calf? Why a golden calf? Huh? Yeah. Now you open your mouth, what's why a golden calf? And I know you do not know. That's why I'm asking you. Your sister is looking at you. Seeing any answer with <laughs> Ah, why a golden cow? Rachel, why a golden cow? <coughs> no idea. Completely down at anything, huh? Grace, why a golden cow? Huh? Why not a golden cat? Why a golden cow? You gotta understand, this is a representative of the Egyptian bull god. The Egyptian, they, remember, how many years they were, they, were they in Egypt? Sandy, how many years were they in Egypt? 400 years. After 400 years in Egypt, when they talk about God, what do you see first? What you see in Egypt, right? Yeah. And that's why a golden calf comes by. Right? If you're too long into something, 
that happens to many people. Now, it's, it's a bull god called Apis. In the earlier period of the Canaanites, fertility god also called Baal. Right? They were both bull. They both had come. So in Exodus 32, the Hebrew escaping Egypt asked Aaron, the brother of their leader, Moses, to fashion a golden cup during a long absence of Moses. And that's what happened. So it's a golden cup. What you see when you were slave, when God took them out of the land of Egypt and brought them to the Mount Sinai, what is happening from there to there? This is what's happening. They were slain there. By the time he brought them to Mount Sinai, they were sons now, no longer slaves. As has changed. They were slaves, they were free. Do I go back to slavery again? Huh? That's why it was uh, uh, Bonke once said this. If you, are, if you are delivered from alcoholism, don't go to the bar to do evangelism. You, you understand? Yes. If you are safe from alcoholism, don't go to the bar to do evangelism. You'll get into trouble. Okay? <laughs> so don't go there. That area has become what? No, no entry for you. Because you're safe from this thing. Right? God would never do that to you. God saves you from the same place and puts you in the same place. No, he will not do that. Because that's your weakness. Okay, so he put you somewhere else. Now this happens terribly bad. God saved them from the land of Egypt. They were slaves. And they had to bow down to all those things. Now they are free. And the first thing God told them to do is don't have any other God beside me. That's it. Is there a figure God showed? No. And that's important. Then you realize much later when, when people wanted to see something, the Catholic Church came up with a cross and with Jesus and many other things they came up with. Now, all this happens. Now, what's his name? The cobbler who went to India, what's his name? Oh, I forgot. One of the great uh, missionary, forgot his name. He went to India, and when he landed in India, the first thing he saw, he saw a god called Parvati with his, her son Morgan. She's holding like that, and his reflection goes right back to Mother Mary and Jesus. He said, "Oh, now I know where this come from." <laughs> you understand? So we, they copied a lot of things from from pagan, and they all put it in the church. We don't have to go back there. Why do we need to go back there again? We're free. Now, the last video that I saw this morning um, was this. An Arab man is telling a, a Arab girl that she is wrong. And the last part of it, when he finished up, you know what he said? The truth will set you free. Where did he get that from? From the scripture. Right? That is important. Now, when you close that, the, all the air will come this side. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy with the cold. <coughs> You'll be surprised at uh, 6 degrees. Eh? I sometimes don't wear, you know. It's one time early morning, I got up. I don't know. Um, uh, the late afternoon. I went to see my friend. He said, he said Pastor, come, come and have dinner, dinner. So I went. Everybody was staring at me. I was wondering why they were all staring at me. You know why? It was six degrees, I was wearing a short and one t-shirt. I was walking me. <laughs> Everything. So I'm sort of gila or what? <laughs> but I was happy because the cold was I, I really me and my son both like very cold. We can enjoy ourselves. The fan will be running high speed and the raining outside, I still can enjoy myself. <laughs> but I like cold. Now Let's come back to it. So the calm is bad. 3,000 people died because they never followed the word of God. And you cannot blame anybody else. Okay, that's, that's where we are. We can't blame anybody for what is happening in this passage itself. Cannot. 
Now, look at the last part of the word in verse 35, the plague. The same word translated plague there is the same word that happened in Egypt. The first plague was turn water into what? Blood. Right? The second plague was a frog. The third plague was what? What's the third plague? Yeah, your people are terrible. Huh? It's like a, it's like, you know, some people got fly, lice, kind of small, small insects. Okay, that came by. Okay, so you realize this is the same word God is using. So you go back to that kind of life, He will punish you that kind of way. The Egyptians say, no, we don't believe in your God. And God showed them the plague. How many plagues was there altogether? Seven. Seven plagues. Wow. How many plagues? Don't know. There were ten plagues, right, in Egypt. I know, ten. Altogether ten. She divided, she only gave seven. The three she had. She is God now. Now, you, 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 you understand scripture. God is, you know, when you're reading, you're going to read. There's a plague there at the end. But there was ten plagues to bring these people out of the land of Egypt. Ten plagues that God did to the people of it. Now, look at me. First seven plague. Egyptian God, the king Pharaoh, hard in his heart. When you come to the eighth plague, if you look carefully, it didn't say Pharaoh hard in his heart. It says God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. No longer Pharaoh hardened, God hardened it for him. Made it even difficult for him to repent now. Get it? Now the same plague that happened there, now is going to happen to the same people who are saved from it. Did the people of Israel go through the plague in the 10th plague of Egypt? No. They were in a land called Gosham. And they were near to Egypt, the whole place, but they were spared from it. Amazingly, God spared them, but not the people of Egypt badly. But they were saved. What, how many plagues was that? Ten, correct? To save them, to bring them out. On the tenth plague, what was the tenth plague? Don't look at the phone, it's not there. <laughs> what was the, shut up. What's the tenth plague? What's the tenth plague? Uh, she, she, she opened a big mouth. Yeah, no. <laughs> Zero kunia, all of you. Now, think carefully. If when he hits the Pharaoh himself, he relent. He said, okay, okay, go, go, go. But then after that, he changed his mind. He went after them. Now what did God do? He wiped the army out. They all crossed the Red Sea. After that, they all followed through, all of them were wiped out. So, two, few areas they were wiped out. One, when all the male child all died. Two, the Pharaoh himself got caught in it, correct? I know. Three, all their money was gone now. When the people of Egypt went and asked them, they all gave them, give, give, take, 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 go, go. So, now Egypt is bankrupt. Number four, what happened? All whole army is wiped out. So what is happening here? God brought a great disaster on them so he can save his people. Now the people want to go back to the same way they came from. So is it justifying for God to send a plague on them? Huh? It may not sound, I mean, how many of you have taken medicine and are so happy about it? <laughs> you don't like it, right? Sometimes so bitter. And then the cough syrup now has got so much sugar. <laughs> you know, terrible, right? Now. right? now, when I go for my, every, not every time, but once in a while, they ask you to drink um, one bottle of very sweet, like orange juice, like that. And then they ask you to drink. One hour later, they will take blood from you and see your blood. Okay, see how much is it, or has it dropped? 
in that one hour of you taking the drink, if it has dropped, then it's good for you. If it has never dropped, uh, you're in trouble already. Okay, so they know clearly there. In one hour, they can already test you. Right? The next time I go for my, my testing, they, I don't have to go for blood test. They'll just pin on it and test you on the spot, they can tell you. This is what's going on. So, why am I saying this? The reason I say this is this. It's, 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 um, what was I saying earlier? I've forgotten now. What was I saying? What's the, <laughs> yeah, I forgot my, uh, flick. Last trick. I forgot why I was supposed to say that. But, huh? The, the, the whole idea of, you know, uh, God taking the people out of the land of Egypt is to bless them, right? So on that time when they came to Mount Sinai, it was a blessing that God blessed them. Now from there, He's going to take them and give them a land that's flowing with milk and honey. This is what God's plan is. And for all of us, this is our God's plan. Take us from our, where we were before, take us out, bless us and give us something that we can go on being blessed and that's what god's plan is always but what do we do we want to go back to where we came from how silly that is and the people of israel actually wanted to go back and so what god has to do is to curse you again and the plague is a curse now look at me it's the demon that actually talks to you most of the time. And they are the one who's telling you, never mind, uh, one time uh, it's okay. Uh. No one's seeing. <laughs> you know, no one knows. Oh, uh, After that, you ask forgiveness. Uh. And that's what the demon is actually telling you. He keep telling you. If you allow him, he'll co take control of you. And that's what it is. When people go and cast out a demon out of it, and that's what it is. Now, let's not say a demon and a fallen angel. They are two different groups. Eh? The fallen angels has body. Eh? The demon has no body. They have no. That's why they go and possess somebody's body. They have no body. Okay. So, the next time I'll tell you where the demon actually comes from. But here, the junction of it, this is what it is. So some of the people there, though God has spoken to them, your mind hasn't changed yet. They were looking for a leader to lead them. But they were not looking to God as their leader to lead them. You and I have to put in our mind that God is the one leading you. Not me, not him. We're just guys. But God is leading you. You get up in the morning when you pick, pick up your Bible to read it, you must begin to think that God is about to speak to you. Expectancy is very important. You're expecting God to speak. But I want to tell you, it doesn't happen every day. And God says something to you. But He's still talking while you're reading His Word, right now. Yes. So He's still talking. But not in an audible voice or whatever it is. He's still talking. Next week when we come back here, we realize that the, the problem the uh, next problem that Jeremiah is facing is that Jeremiah is facing with the prophet, his own occupation group of people. And what they are doing is completely different from what they were supposed to do. Okay? They are worse than the rest of the people. First, when I talked to you about Jeremiah, he went to the market, he was wrong, right? The scales were wrong, everybody is stealing from everybody. That's what he sees first in society. Then he saw the king. They were doing the same thing. Now he comes to the prophet. Here, what we're seeing here is when we go back to God's word, we'll never get caught in this problem. This happens. This is the first place that many of them died. After this came the kibbutz. Then he went. In the kibbutz, they killed children. I have the videos. Yeah. Well, it's gross. I get all these videos. I'm so happy. I get all these videos. They're all in my phone. But this is bad. This is really bad. 
Now we're going to change our thinking and all of this. We need to go back to scripture. When we look at scripture, you realize judgment did come to Israel. And God did judge God's people. He did. You cannot say all was Hamas. But God used Hamas. You have to use somebody, right? Yeah. You use Hamas. This is not good. You know how difficult to get this video? Home morning. You know why I'm late? Because of this video. Yeah. Finally, when I got a video, I forgot how to transfer the video into yeah. my phone, into my laptop first. Then copy it and put it. I forgot. When I was having a meal, then I asked. Then I found out. Then they got me a link to download. By the time I already forgotten the timing. But I wanted to say this to all of you. This was hidden. Even in the video when you think you only a small portion of it to show this. Then they quickly go off. I think that they made a mistake by showing this. Now we know what's the real reason this whole thing went haywire. So by the time 6.30, by the time 7 o'clock, a lot of people have died. Now, if you, you look at me, if you believed in God, and if you go through this and, and, and you're killed by it, never, never be worried. Because one of these days, I will tell you this, God will come for you. On the very moment you can see God. I like the picture um, when they were stoning Stephen, right? They were stoning him. His eyes was open and he saw Jesus standing up for him from the throne. And that must be a great thing for anyone, right? And so I want to say this, when they were in the Colosseum and when the lions were let loose, the people of God were actually praising God before they were mouthed by the lions and eaten. And I'm not sure what they saw, but I can sure know what God showed to Stephen would have shown them also. So we have no fear on dying, but what will come will come. But what we really need to understand here is God judge. And the judgment of God are truthful. And this is what we see. So the plague, when they say, then the Lord sent a plague on the people because they are made to come. Every sin has its own consequences. Right? If you have a problem with your mouth, so you must learn how to huh? how to keep your mouth shut. You know when you're going with all these people, they're going to talk all of this. You can quietly say, ah, wait, ah, I go there. Ah. Where are you going? Go there. And they don't return. Because you know if you're going to go there, you will sin. Everything that you know you're weak in, don't go there. Don't even bother looking at it. Because it will create problems for you. The moment you do that, it gives you more strength to go on in life. God gives us strength. Get it? Every battle that comes in, He will give you strength to go for it. So don't get upset by it. So when we look at Exodus 32, we realize a lot of things have gone wrong. A lot of things. Right? You, Aaron is supposed to be the fellow who to keep everything. He saw God also. But his mind is, hasn't changed yet. So if, if someone comes to the Lord, you know, the first thing is to go with them and teach them. Not to leave them as they are, but go and start teaching them. Telling them what is right from scripture and what is bad. What's not allowed in scripture. From scripture what is not allowed. You need to tell them. Where do we tackle all this in their mind? If we clean their mind, we clean the person completely. Aaron wasn't. And so he quickly 
came up with the car. Right? Did they tell them to make the car? Huh? Hello? What did they tell them to do? They tell them, come, make us a God who shall go before us. That's what they said, right? Yeah. And you can find that in verse 2. Right? Up, make us a God who will go before us. No, verse 1. As Moses, this man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know where he come of it. That's what they say, right? Who made the car? Yeah. Ah! It's not the people. It was Aaron who made the car. So his mind hasn't changed yet. So you and I, when we come to God, we must keep renewing the mind. Therefore, you, when you look at Romans chapter 12, he says, therefore, renew your mind. If that is an acceptable place of worship, to renew our mind. When we renew here, it's easy for us to function. Get it? Yes. So the next time when you see all this happening, and next time when you, when you listen to the news, and people are arguing about certain things, as Christians we know this, that God do judge. As Christians we know, He judge both ways. He also will judge Hamas. But this has to happen. Right? Now, I ask this question, why was no, no no soldiers and all that guarding the place and all that? I tell you why. Because they want to become clever. So everything was then put up with cameras and digital and all. Everything was there. They became so sophisticated. Do you know where was the first thing Hamas hit? The cameras. Once they hit the camera, no one can see anything. So no one knew that they were assembling to come. No one knew. It was all shut off. And in a few seconds they all came by. So now Israel has to think that manpower is more important, not digital power. Okay? You can never beat this from a camera. Do you know? You can play with the camera, but you cannot play with this. So it's very important and that's why there was nobody in the area for some time already not now but for some time there was no longer the last uh, Japan minister came up with this idea and they put it in so you cannot blame everything on the new prime minister All right? it's already established in a place like that so when we look at war today always have this idea let's look at both sides right let's look at both sides when we look at both sides we'll come to a better understanding but a lot of people are biased and they will look at only one side and forget to look at the other side correct now they say oh many children are dying you know um, uh, uh, the Israel people are slaughtering them not true so if you look at both sides, you realize not true. Before even they send a um, son to whack them, they actually call them up and say, we're going to hit your place. Get out. They will call. Yeah, inform them, in this is time, we're going to hit you. And then they hit. In fact, they told them all to come down south. Then leave the north up empty. But they didn't. So this is not to blame one side. So when you look at both sides of the story, you realize this is what's happening. We do not know what's going to happen next, but we, we all should know this, that we need to prepare ourselves. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what we see. We thank you, Lord, for what has been spoken of, Lord. Here is your word, Lord. Here is your judgment, Lord. It needs to be judged because you are a God who judges, Lord. So when we look at war, Lord, when we look at the news today, Lord, let us not be so gullible, Lord, that we take everything in, Lord. Let us see it clearly from the perspective, Lord, 
what has taken place, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus we pray. Okay, is that thing? If we give the glory to God.